Well, I think this is the number one unspoken fear about minimalism and starting on that path. Yeah, do you think? I think and probably either because people can't articulate it, like you don't, you feel it, but you don't, couldn't put words to it. Okay. Or you can, but you don't want to because yeah. you think you're the only one. Right, right. Well, so let's talk about that today. I do think anytime we start something new, there are a lot of unknowns because if you are going to simplify your house, if you're like, minimalism sounds good, but I don't actually know what it's going to look like for me and my house. And then this is the fear that creeps in. The fear is that without all of my stuff, I am going to feel empty or alone or unsettled. Yeah, I think that's real. Totally. And what's been so interesting to me when we've been doing um, like our monthly collaborations or mega motivation, we've had a friend join in and her channel is a hoarder's heart. And she has shed so much light on hoarding, like actual hoarding. That has been so interesting. And it's really helped me to have more empathy towards people that suffer with that. And she talked about how most people, the stuff causes stress and anxiety. I mean, that's how I feel um, in my house with it. But for her, it's, she said, the stuff brought me comfort mm -hmm. and getting rid of it caused me huge stress and anxiety. Now, obviously this is like a continuum, a spectrum. Yeah, um, but I think a lot of people can relate to that. Totally. Mm -hmm. And I think for many of us, I think too it felt backwards because I'm like, I've spent my whole life accumulating this stuff that uh, for many of us, it was stuff we didn't have when we were growing up, right? Yeah or just the things we think we need to run a household, we think that our kids need, yep. we think that we need for hobbies and different things to occupy our time. And so what are we gonna do <laughs> with ourselves or who are we gonna be when this stuff, stuff is stripped away? And so, I mean, you kind of fell into this just after observing me, yeah. <laughs> right? And so what's been your experience as you've kind of simplified your house? Well, I am amazed at the peace that it brings. So yeah. there's this fear, my life is going to be empty, but the exact opposite is true. Like we have never heard that from someone. We no, have never uh -uh. heard someone say, I simplified my home and now I sit in my empty house and I just feel kind of lonely and bored. Right. Ever. And that's what even in um, my video a couple weeks ago when I was talking about if you don't have time to declutter, we sometimes like to think like, oh, well maybe once I get my house simplified, then, then I'll have time for these craft projects or these other hobby things. And so I want to keep all of that stuff. And what's so funny is like, I've never found myself on a Saturday afternoon, like what will I do with my time? Yeah. And I think what has been so cool is the things that we have filled our time now that we have is been more with doing things with people. Yep. Do you think so? Absolutely. And so I find that I'm not necessarily drawn back to those hobbies or the crafts that I thought I was going to do. Or if I am, it's in some way with other people. Like our mom does rubber stamping. And so now like she called the other day because she's like, I got to join another stamping group. <laughs> and it meets once a month and we do a card exchange. And so she still enjoys her craft. But what's so funny is she's highly simplified it. Yep. And now she's finding ways to do it with other people. Yep. And so I, I, I think that fear is so valid, completely it valid. Really but I think what you'll find is that as we clear up this mental space, the physical decluttering leads to clearing up mental clutter as well. And we find really meaningful ways to fill that time. And some people, you know, have even kind of approached it from the opposite way where it's like, you know what, I know I struggle with some anxiety or depression or some difficult things from my past. Mm -hmm. And so simplifying my home is actually the easiest step that I can take right now. And they find that by making their environment more peaceful, now they find more strength mm -hmm. or time or courage to then take on some of the things that might actually be true. Like maybe you, you do have some of these difficult things going on, but now you feel like you have a little bit more bandwidth to handle it. So I think that's, we've heard a lot of yeah. testimonies that way as well, where, cause some people will feel sad or lonely in their simplified house, mm -hmm. but now you have some bandwidth and some courage to, to deal with that. And I think some confidence, confidence. too, right? I'm, yep. I'm amazed that the confidence you build in yourself as you declutter your house. 
But I hope what else that we can demonstrate too is that we still want our homes to be inviting. We want them to be comfortable. I like the word cozy. So yes, as much as Tom likes to give me a hard time, I do still love having throw pillows and yep. you know, pillows on the bed. I don't have as many as I used to, but cute decor, you know, yeah. occasionally. And your bedroom is just so adorable and yeah. inviting. And yeah. we really like that. But we still intentionally kept it very simple, right? I thought you were going to say, what we hope you see is like, we're still cool. <laughs> we're not like super boring people now because we don't have all the stuff. just like, no, you can't have that cup. Give that to me. Yeah. I only have five cups and you're, or whatever. Yeah. I don't even know what. <laughs> but it is fun too thinking like, you know, we've been talking about like this walking group that I'm starting. Um, and to think like, oh, well, what if it... Like you start to run the scenarios of like, well, what if it started raining and we weren't done visiting and people wanted to come into my home, mm -hmm. right? Now I feel like, hey, come on mm -hmm. in, right? Yeah. And in the past, that would have not been, it had been like, yeah. oh, well, maybe I shouldn't do this then because what if then somebody wanted to stop by and come in my house, yeah. right? No, that's true. And so it is interesting how it, it changes our perspective on the things that we do and how we spend our time. You know, and going back to that fear, it's like, okay, as I simplify the things around us, then what am I going to focus on or mm -hmm. or count and and the lord actually does encourage us to count our provision mm. you know one of my like just most bright and shining parenting moments so far because you know how there's so many hard ones but <laughs> one where i just kind of wanted a badge um we were backing out of the the garage and adley goes she just turned three she's like mama we have such a nice house Aww. And we live in a totally normal house, but I think what she's heard from us mm -hmm. is just a daily appreciation for the things and the people around us, yeah. you know, and just like remind, like we'll say a lot of times, oh, we're so lucky to have all of this food, you know, or, or we're so blessed to have, you know, family close by and in our lives. And isn't it so great that we could get together with your cousins today? And so it's something that we've modeled and, and then, but when you hear it come back out, you're just yeah. like, I think I did something <laughs> like I, like I kind of did want like a small mom badge. Yeah. Um, but in Numbers, we see the Lord encouraging the people of Israel to do this. So this is Numbers 1, verses 1 through 3. It says, The Lord spoke to Moses in the tent of meeting in the desert of Sinai. He said, Take a census of the whole Israelite community, everyone, every man who is older than 20 years old and able to serve in the army. And where they were in history is they were, the Lord was leading them into the promised land. And he knew that this was going to take courage. And so what he was saying to them is, I want you to count your provision. I want you to see what I have given you. I want you to know that this army has strength in order to increase your faith. And, you know, sometimes we do the, the opposite of that <laughs> and we count how many days or months we've been experiencing this illness mm -hmm. or days or years we've been in a difficult marriage or um, the number of things on our to-do list or the things that are number of times I've had to nag my kids, you know. Or the and things my neighbor has that I don't. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a really good one. Yeah. And so we kind of start to count the wrong things, but you can see how then that's where our faith lies, you yeah. know, and then our faith lies in, oh, I'm lacking something, I don't have enough. Um, and those are difficult things. I don't want to discount that. Yeah. But when we can flip it and start counting the Lord's provision in our lives, whether it's the loving people that we have around us. And sometimes, like, I get it. It might be one friend. It might be one person at church that kind of talks to you, yeah. you know, and, and we have to build on that. We have to focus on that. We have to thank the Lord for that. And then we build on it. Or it might be one good day where you're feeling healthy and strong again. We have to thank the Lord and focus on that, you know. And I do feel like it's, it's a habit, it's a mindset yeah. shift, it's something we can model in our family, mm -hmm. but it becomes, when we count our provision, it becomes a source of faith for us. And I can't believe how as we've simplified, so we have less stuff, how much more thankful and grateful yeah. we are. It's almost like you have to clear out the gluttonousness, yeah. oh, sorry. <laughs> you know, just all the extra, being surrounded by so much excess, which is so funny. I mean, this is really the first time in history that we've had this problem, mm -hmm. right? That the problem is too much, but it's amazing how as we clear out that excess and that clutter, it feels like it's just so much easier to focus on the things that we have and to be grateful for those things. And we all want to have a grateful heart. You know, we, we're battling entitlement right now as a generation, we're a, a, uh, battling gluttony, you know? And so it's fun how I think, like you might be like, 
oh great, one more thing I have to try and remember to do now, <laughs> you know, to be a good person. Um, but I think what you're saying is it comes naturally. Yeah. You know, and I think we do then get to teach the others around us, our kids or other people that like, hey, I am so happy and content with less and that's a yeah. great place to be. Mm -hmm. So Father, we just thank you. Lord, thank you that you are so faithful to provide. Lord, that you provided for the people of Israel. Lord, you gave them the numbers and the strength and the courage they needed to take the promised land. But also, even in Gideon's case, Lord God, you whittled down the army. You gave them less in order to show your faithfulness and your goodness. So even for those of us who feel like we're counting fewer provisions than others, Lord, we know that in that you show yourself faithful and strong. So Lord, help us to stir up gratitude in our hearts, Lord God. Help us to look to you for the things that we need and help us to just receive the abiding peace that's available through you alone. And so I bless each one of us now in Jesus' name.